This is an introduction to the histology and clinical features of pigmented lesions, including benign nevi, dysplastic nevi, and melanoma. When I was first learning about pigmented lesions, I remember that I had a tough time wrapping my mind around the distinction between nevi and melanoma. And remember that nevi is just a fancy term for moles. And so in this video, I want to talk about the clinical and histological distinctions among benign nevi dysplastic nevi, and melanoma. Now, one big point that I want to make right from the start is that notice here that I've written these lesions quite suggestively from benign nevi here on the left to the more malignant melanoma on the right. However, it's best to view this simply as a phenotypic spectrum of lesions rather than a causal pathway. That is to say, while it's possible for more benign lesions to transform into more malignant lesions, more often than not, these lesions arise independent of one another. And so, for example, while some dysplastic nevi, which are what patients commonly refer to as funny-looking moles, can transform into melanoma, more often than not, melanoma arises de novo or on its own. So with that big picture overview, let's jump right into the histological distinctions among these lesions. And to do that, I'm going to bring up two cartoon images. The image here at the left is a cartoon histological slice of a benign nevus. And on the right here, we have a cartoon histological slice of a malignant melanoma. And before we talk about the specifics, I just want to orient you to what you're looking at. So here I'm highlighting the dermal epidermal junction. And above this dermal epidermal junction is the epidermis in this darker tan color. And below it is the dermis in this lighter tan color, which also contains the blood vessels, which are highlighted with these red and blue circles. And notice these brownish cells. These brownish cells represent the melanocytes, the pigment producing cells in the skin. And what I want to call your attention to is notice that these melanocytes are no longer confined to this dermal epidermal junction where they're usually located. Instead, these melanocytes are forming clusters and these clusters are found in the epidermis at the dermal epidermal junction as well as down in the dermis. So now that you're a little bit more oriented to what you're seeing, let's go ahead and build a framework by which to compare these two lesions. And the framework that we're going to use here is to compare these lesions on three different histological features. And the first feature that we're going to look at is the overall architecture of the lesion. And by architecture, I simply mean how these melanocyte clusters are arranged in the layers of the skin. So here in the benign nevus, I'm simply circling the arrangement of melanocytes. And I want you to notice that the arrangement is fairly symmetric. Um, so these melanocyte clusters are distributed fairly symmetrically within this lesion. And these individual clusters of melanocytes are fairly um, well demarcated and arranged in a very orderly fashion, which is in contrast to what's going on here in the melanoma. So notice here that these melanocyte clusters are arranged in a fairly asymmetric distribution as I'm circling here. And moreover, these individual melanocyte clusters vary in shape and size. So we have some smaller clusters and then we also have some larger clusters of cells. So we can say that the overall architecture is a bit more irregular in the melanoma. Now the second feature to compare these two lesions on is the degree of cellular irregularity or atypia. And so let's go ahead and start with the benign nevus. So notice here that these melanocytes are fairly similar in shape and the nuclei are all the same size, which is in direct contrast to, again, what's going on with this melanoma. So notice here that these melanocytes are all different shapes and sizes. Some are big, some are small, some are oval, some are round, just to give you the sense that these size and the shapes are very different among these cells. And moreover, these nuclei in black are also different sizes and shapes. And so the term that's often used to describe this phenomenon is pleomorphism. And so people will often refer to this as the fact that these melanocytes are pleomorphic along with their nuclei. All right, so the last feature we're gonna look at is the degree of stromal response, which is just a fancy way of saying the degree of inflammation that accompanies the lesion. And the way the cartoon highlights this is notice here these speckles down here in the dermis of the malignant melanoma. Well, these represent 
inflammatory cells or um, an inflammatory infiltrate that is accompanying these atypical melanocytes that are invading into the dermis. And while they're often present in melanoma, they're notably absent or very minimal in nevi. Now at this point, you might be wondering, where do dysplastic nevi fit on this histological spectrum from benign nevi to melanoma? And suffice to say that dysplastic nevi are somewhere in between the histological features discussed for the benign nevi and melanoma. That is to say, when comparing these lesions on those three features we talked about, the overall architecture, the cellular irregularity, and the degree of stromal response, Dysplastic nevi have irregularity somewhere in between that of a benign mole and a malignant melanoma. Now, histologically, there are more specific definitions that are used to distinguish these three lesions, but just for the purposes of giving you a broad overview, we won't get into the nitty gritty of those definitions in this video. However, before we move on, there's just one more point of clarification that I'd like to make, and it actually has to do with something that tripped me up when I was comparing these lesions to what I had learned for keratinocyte cancers, so the squamous cell and basal cell carcinomas. So if you remember for those cancers, one of the hallmark features was invasion past this basement membrane here of the atypical keratinocyte sites into the underlying dermis. And so by that definition, you might be wondering, well, if we have invasion past the basement membrane of these, you know, melanocyte clusters, why are we still calling this benign nevus benign? And I think the best way to understand this is to take a moment to talk about how we believe nevi originate and compare that to how we believe melanoma originates. So let's go ahead and start with nevi. So recall that melanocytes are derived from neural crest cells, which migrate from below the epidermis through the dermis to the dermal epidermal junction. Now it's believed that Nevi arise due to aberrant migration somewhere along this pathway. So you can imagine that if these melanocytes got stuck in the dermis, dermal epidermal junction, or even up here in the epidermis, they could form these clusters in each of those layers and form these benign pigmented lesions. On the other hand, melanoma is felt to originate from atypical melanocytes at the dermal epidermal junction, which I'm highlighting here in red. In fact, many melanoma lesions start off with what's called a early horizontal growth phase. And this horizontal growth phase refers to the fact that these atypical melanocytes grow along this dermal epidermal junction. And oftentimes, early in their growth, they can be confined only to the epidermis. And if they're confined only to the epidermis, we call these lesions melanoma in situ. Now you can imagine that if these atypical melanocytes are just confined to the epidermis or are very early on in their horizontal growth phase, such that very minimal or not a very significant amount of invasion into the underlying dermis has occurred, that the prognosis for these lesions is actually pretty good by simple excision with margins. However, unfortunately, melanoma likes to spread and it likes to spread fast. And so what often happens is that after this horizontal after this early horizontal growth phase for most melanomas, what ends up happening is that there's a vertical growth phase into the underlying dermis, which I'm highlighting here in blue. And so when these atypical cells then invade into the dermis, the prognosis worsens. And in fact, there's a specific measurement that's often taken called the Breslow thickness. So I'll go ahead and write that. So Breslow thickness, and we're not gonna worry about this specific definition, but essentially what they do is they measure from a place in the epidermis to the point of deepest invasion um, into the dermis or even below that. And it turns out that that depth of invasion is the most important prognostic factor for these patients. Essentially, the deeper the invasion, the worse the prognosis. All right, so now that we've gone over the big picture histological distinctions among these lesions, let's go ahead and take a look at their clinical appearances. So in this slide here, I have a clinical image for benign nevi, three 
types of benign nevi, and in the center here is a dysplastic nevus, and at the far right is a malignant melanoma. And I want to make a note that in the next video we'll go over some specific criteria by which you can use to better distinguish benign nevi from dysplastic nevi and melanoma, but in the rest of this video I just want to go over in kind of broad strokes the differences grossly among these lesions to get you better acquainted with them. So let's go ahead and start here on the left with benign nevi and then we can work our way towards the right. So when we're talking about benign nevi, there are kind of three main groups. And so the first type are uh, nevi that are known as junctional nevi. And these junctional nevi are characterized by a well demarcated border and a very flat looking appearance with a very even pigmentation. And that reflects the fact that the histologically these melanocyte clusters are located primarily in a very symmetric orderly fashion along the dermal epidermal junction, giving this this very pigmented even tone. The second type of nevi shown here in the center are known as compound nevi. And this compound uh, characteristic is due to the fact that if you notice here there's a central elevation in the lesion and then more on the kind of outer edges here is the more macular appearing uh, lesion that we saw with the junctional lesion. So having these two characteristics makes it compound and this reflects the fact that histologically the melanocyte clusters are in the dermal epidermal junction but there are also some in the dermis which gives it this kind of nodular raised appearance in the center of the lesion here. And then the final type of nevi down here are the dermal nevi. And dermal nevi describes exactly essentially what's going on histologically, which is that the, the melanocyte clusters are located primarily in the dermis, which gives us this very nodular raised appearance and this kind of lighter pigmented tone. Now if we jump to the dysplastic nevus in the center, I want to call your attention to the fact that this slightly larger lesion has fairly well demarcated borders, maybe some slight irregularity, more so than we saw with the benign nevi. But also notice that there's a degree of asymmetry. So if you were to draw a line, this lesion isn't as symmetric as these kind of benign nevi, in which if we essentially drew a line in the center of each of these lesions, each of these uh, sides would look fairly identical. And so there's some slight asymmetry, and some could also argue that the color variation in this lesion is a little bit more than what we saw with the benign nevi. So there are areas of darker and kind of lighter pigmentation, more so than we saw with the benign lesions. And then finally, if we look at the far right at the malignant melanoma, it should be pretty obvious to you that there's a lot of irregularity going on. So I'm highlighting here the irregular borders. And notice right off the bat that this lesion is fairly asymmetric. I don't even have to draw a line down the lesion um, for you to visualize it because it's so readily apparent. And then another striking feature is that there's a lot of color variation. So notice here that in, kind of in the center of this lesion here, there's almost a region of whitish, kind of very light brown. And then in other regions, there's kind of a more darkly pigmented tone. And again, here's a little bit of more whitish color here. And so all of this clues you into the fact that there's some abnormality and potentially um, a malignant process going on histologically. So to wrap up, I just want to remind you to keep these distinctions among these lesions in mind as you watch the next video in which you'll be introduced to a pretty neat mnemonic that helps you distinguish benign nevi from more dysplastic nevi and melanoma.